Hey, I'm FTFE and welcome back to the channel that attaches jumper cables to the nipples of stupidity. Mason Thompson is a flat earther on a mission. A mission to be crowned dumb fuck of the year 2020. We're only three months in and he's already done the dumbest thing imaginable by committing a crime and then posting it on his YouTube channel. Hey guys, you're not on a ball in space. The earth is flat. Large bodies of water do not curve, okay? Large bodies of water do not curve. Research flat earth. <laughs> And then after getting arrested for harassing children, he then promptly posted a video of him harassing a child. I uh, shared flat earth with these kids at the school the other day and they arrested me for disorderly conduct. I've got to mute this part because he is playing music on his phone and I don't want to get a copyright strike, but I pretty much just told him, research all the stuff on your flyers yourself. You don't have to believe anything in there, but if you want to find my YouTube videos, they're on the back on the bottom and that's about it. About, all right, be blessed. But this isn't even the first time that Nathan has had to be warned about harassing school children. This video happened back in June last year. So, and you just gotta look into it, man. This is a massive awakening taking place. You guys ever heard of the flat earth? I'm gonna hold on. Hey guys! Hey guys, you gotta research the flat earth, okay? The earth is flat. It's not a moving ball. Okay? I just, does anybody want a flyer? Yeah! Research large bodies of water! Research large bodies of water! It's just a piece of paper! Don't worry, it's just a piece of paper! Don't let them, don't let them scare you! Don't let them scare you, it's just a piece of paper! God bless you guys! You're not on a moving ball! There's no real pictures of the earth from space! Now, no problem! Teach them the truth and I won't have to come here! Nathan keeps on trying to hand out his flatter flyers that show us all of his moronic beliefs and says that you can verify everything on them. Hey, give them to the teachers. Hey, you can verify, you can verify everything on my flyer. Really? Well, let's take a look at his dumbass flyer and rip it apart in episode 41 of Flurfs Are Idiots. We're living on a disc, floating through space with a tiny sun. <laughs> Thank you for joining me once again to look at the people with IQs lower than rocks. Nathan Thompson keeps flashing his flatter flyer around and attempting to put flyers on cars. But you know what? I'm gonna get their car. You best believe it. Can't even get that right. Fuck me. Well, let's take a look at this massive waste of paper, shall we? And the stupid begins. Nathan's flyer starts with a bogus claim about NASA. It reads, NASA trains its astronauts in a pool. Coincidentally, in many NASA spacewalk videos, bubbles are visible moving through space. Drain the pool, NASA, straight out of the gates with unrivaled stupidity. Let's take a look at one of these bubbles in space videos. Here we see a NASA fails video, which appears to show a solitary bubble slowly floating diagonally up to the right. Okay then, um, I I'm convinced Earth's flat and NASA's a lie. Game over, Globetards. No. Let's start with the fact that there's only one bubble. Just, just one. Even your own flyer shows about a thousand bubbles from the underwater training shot. Where are the rest of the bubbles, Nathan? You don't just get one bubble from underwater apparatus. Also, why is this bubble going slowly up in a diagonal direction? Bubbles don't do that. So, what is it we're seeing? Most likely sublimation. The current ISS EMU suit and the Apollo PLSS use a sublimation cooling system. The sublimator works on the principle of sublimation. That is the process by which a solid turns directly into a vapor bypassing the liquid phase. In this case, ice is formed on the sublimator evaporator sieve and is allowed to vaporize to space, removing heat with it. Air and cooling water are passed through the fins in the sublimator, which extracts heat from each system. It's science. 
Oh, so you wouldn't get it, would you? Moving on. Okay, here we are. Two pictures that are apparently evidence that NASA fake their photos. Let's start with the one on the left. The claim here is that the Earth in this photo is pasted from the NASA photo titled Earthrise taken from Apollo 8. And you know what? That's correct. But here's the thing. This fake photo is not from NASA, and NASA have never claimed it is. Here is the original photo titled AS11405868, and it's from Apollo 11. So what your flyer is claiming is a NASA CGI blunder is not even from NASA. Just some random person who pasted an image from Apollo 8 onto an image from Apollo 11. Research bro, do you even do it? Now let's move on to the picture on the right. The claim here is that the blue and white grid behind the astronaut is a screen for chroma key. That is something to remove a background from a video and replace it with something else. And here's the problem with that. Look at my green screen. What do you notice? It's one solid color. In this case, green, because green is the best color for the computer to easily see what to remove. If you had a cross-section grid like that, there is no chance you could remove the background. Having that grid would literally make it impossible to chroma key. As this video shows, the grid behind him is actually used to aid in calculating vectors and experiments. Whoa, the first page and your flyer fails hard. So the claim here is that NASA get 58 million a day and all we get is CGI. Well, that's not true at all. Not one of the pictures you have there is CGI and you couldn't even tell if it was anyway. As for the budget, that's not enough. It's 0.4% of the annual budget of the USA. And in 2018, 73.5% of its total budget went on contracts with nearly 5,000 businesses, nonprofit organizations, and educational institutions across the United States. NASA's major contractors, Boeing, Lockheed Martin, and SpaceX, and Orbital Sciences are the biggest recipients of NASA funding, though they in turn work with many additional suppliers and businesses. But as a federal agency, every single cent of NASA's money can be accounted for. And remember, they have to pay over 18,000 employees, run a bunch of buildings and research centers, and most importantly, put people and stuff in space, which costs a shit ton of money. What do you think they're doing with the budget, Nathan? Spending 58 million on hookers and blow? You say NASA only gives CGI. Well, the following is a list of things invented by NASA. This list disagrees with your assertion. Next, Nathan is making the point that a lot of ancient cultures thought the Earth was flat and has a quote of Brian Cox. Whether or not Brian said that is actually irrelevant as who cares what ancient cultures thought? A lot of them 
thought that sacrificing a virgin would make the crops grow better the next season. And look at the Hindu one. Are we on the fucking disc world now? On the back of the great Atuan? No, ancient cultures didn't have the ability to discern reality. We do. Well, not you, Nathan. I mean, you're a fucking idiot. So is it just me or is claiming flat earth proofs while displaying a geometrically impossible flat earth map, which also has the sun and moon directly opposite each other, a little ironic? Ah, the pictures of flat surfaces. Yeah, none of those are really high enough to show curve. And as this animation shows, a flat line can be part of the arc of a circle if the field of view is low enough. And how about we look at the first picture ever taken of Earth from space? Oh, what do you know? There's a curve. Also, when liquids are undisturbed, i.e. they have no forces acting on them, they form a sphere. Also, the word level literally means the curve of the Earth. From the Merriam-Webster dictionary, the adjective of level is to conform to the curvature of the liquid parts of Earth's surface. Here, Nathan points out that the FAA trains pilots on a flight sim that assumes a flat, non-rotating surface. Yeah, of course it does. The plane is in the same reference frame as the Earth. The next claim here is that if a plane does not dip its nose, it will fly off into space. Oh, fuck me. No, you brainless dickweed. A plane could never fly off into space. The plane uses the atmosphere to fly. So, as the plane reaches cruising altitude at, say, 30,000 feet, it sits in a particular band of air pressure. So, if the thrust of the engines and the lift of the wings stay constant, as that pressure band curves with the Earth, so will the plane. It couldn't fly into space because there's no atmosphere there for it to use for thrust or lift. This is the most basic flat Earth crap I've ever heard. Next. Now he says that every experiment has proven that the Earth is completely stationary. You guys know what's coming, right? Bob? If we could simply get one of these ring laser gyroscopes, we would be able to prove once and for all that there is no rotation to the Earth. One of the people in the community actually purchased one for $20,000. But what we found is, is when we turned on that gyroscope, we found that we were picking up a drift. A 15 degree per hour drift. So let's talk about the things he claims here. The North Star proves we're stationary? Hmm. One thing, Nathan, I asked a friend in Australia to go outside and look at the North Star and he couldn't find it. Why is that? Also, did you know that the North Star has changed? In the year 3000 BC, the North Star was a star called Thurban, also known as Alpha Draconis. And in about 13,000 years from now, the precession of the rotation axis will mean that the bright star Vega will be the North Star. How exactly does that support a motionless flat Earth? The Mux and Morley experiment was nothing to do with detecting the motion of the Earth. They used an interferometer to test the drag the Earth would cause in the hypothesized aether. As the Earth moves on its orbit around the Sun, it would cause drift. They tested at two different points in the Earth's orbit and the results were that the aether didn't exist, which then nullifies Aries' failure, which the results were skewed due to the faulty assumption of an aether. And as for Sagnac, that's the effect fiber optic gyros use to measure Earth's rotation. Um, how much was that again, Bob? A 15 degree per hour drift. The next claim is that the horizon always rises to eye level, as you'd expect on a flat Earth, which is just plainly false. Look at these images with perspective lines on. They show you what eye level is and the horizon is below it. And my favourite one for disproving that dumb as fuck claim is this photo from fellow Flat Earth Destroyer, MC Toon, that shows the moon below eye level. Next up, we have a picture that, that, that proves the Earth is a sphere. Hmm. Ignoring the fact that it says they're 8 inches per mile squared, which isn't the formula for the curve of the Earth, that's a parabola, not a circle. Let's take a look at J. Tolan Media's photo of Mount San Jacinto. He got his maths wrong. Who'd have guessed a flat earther would get maths wrong? He gives his observation location as 34.032204 and negative 11870294, and his altitude is 150 feet. Well, the curve calculator predicts a hidden amount for those figures of 6,158 feet. San Jacinto Peak is 10,834 feet above sea level, 
This leaves a predicted visible amount of 4,676 feet, which seems about right. Even peakfinder.org has no problem seeing the mountain from that distance. Next. Next up is the good old claim that you can't have a pressurized atmosphere next to a vacuum without a physical barrier. Not that there is a pressurized atmosphere next to the vacuum of space, there's a pressure gradient. But you can have pressure right next to a vacuum without a physical barrier. You just need a force of some kind, something to create an energy barrier. Like in this nuclear reactor chamber that is a vacuum of 10 to the negative 11 torr, and has a band of high pressure ionized gas sitting right next to a vacuum with no physical barrier between them. In this case, it's some clever electrical and magnetic forces. In the case of the atmosphere, it's gravity. This is child's play. Oh wait, I shouldn't say that around Nathan, should I? And next we see the dumbest claim of all time. The moonlight is cold. Fuck me, Nathan. You and your flat earth crayon munching brigade really are scientifically illiterate, huh? You morons go on about the second law of thermodynamics and how you think our atmosphere and space violate it, but then you say moonlight is cold. No, that's not how light works. Light is energy. Moonlight would have to reverse entropy to be cold, not how physics works. This is a simple phenomenon called radiative cooling where something open to the sky will radiate heat back into space quicker than something in shade. To help me disprove this dumbass claim, starting on the 9th of March, I'm doing a month long cold moonlight test. I did start one last month, but then Storm Dennis ruined it. So take two. To get involved, join my Discord. Link is in the description. For number eight, Nathan the Stupid says that crepuscular rays show the sun is small and local. That's so dumb, it makes my brain sad. With crepuscular rays, the beams are vertical at the point they face the earth and will look converging due to perspective. It's so simple. Look at this image. Is the sun coming from those fucking trees? Even in your image. Is the sun in those clouds? Are pilots trained to avoid the sun? Fuck me, you're dense. And here we have Nathan not understanding gravity. He says that Newton's theory of gravity was never proven. Well, yeah, I guess because Newton never had a theory of gravity. He simply described the apparent downward force that we all experience and quantified it with the universal law of gravitational attraction. Fg equals gm1 m2 over r squared. Einstein was the one with the theory. It's called special and general relativity and is backed up by countless experiments, including the discovery of Neptune. As for density and buoyancy replacing gravity, just know buoyancy requires gravity to be a thing. And if it was due to density, things would go up when I let them go as we have a pressure gradient, which means the atmosphere gets less dense as you go up. He's got one page left. Will he redeem himself? Oh God, it's the fucking dumbest one yet. The claim of zooming in on boats to bring them back over the horizon. He seems to think that the Nikon P900 and P1000 are magic or something. Well, just look at this video from Dazza the cameraman, who using the P1000 takes a screenshot zoomed out and then one zoomed in and shows conclusively that zooming in does not bring boats back into view. And we're done. Nathan Thompson's Flat Earth Flyer debunked and I didn't even break a sweat. I wonder what that dense motherfucker has been up to. Why is he setting fire to a hole of dog shit? Can someone ex... What the... For the first time in my life, I am speechless. Just what the actual fuck, Nathan? For real, guys. On that bombshell, that's all the stupid that I can take. But before I go... I want to say a massive thank you to all my patrons and channel members. You guys are what makes these videos and live streams possible. Without your support and generosity, I couldn't continue to do what I love to do. Starting this week, there will be a regular fortnightly members and patrons only hangout. So make sure you're part of my Discord and we can bring you into the stream. Patrons and members also get to vote on the topic of my series, Stupid Humans. Next episode will be featuring Planner Walking is about anti-vaxxers. Me and the entire world thank you for your support in the fight against stupidity. Thank you for watching. If you've enjoyed that, please leave a thumbs up. 
Subscribe if you're not already and hit the notification bell so you never miss anything from FTFE. And remember, stupidity is not a right. Fight the flat earth. Fight the flat 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 Fight the